Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial about the way a licensing system can be implemented into a .NET application use and then validated using an external server, which in this case is Serial Key Manager. Uh, this is, as I said, it's the second part of this tutorial, so it's, it, would be, it would be a very good idea if you could just look through the, the previous video to just get an understanding of the code that I'm going to talk about today and that I'm going to work on today and uh, that code is uh, basically based on another article which I have provided a link here below this video so if you want to copy the code into your application please feel free to do so by uh, opening that article so if we just summarize what we did last time it was we basically uh, cre created a, an application that would be able to check whether a license I is true or if uh, mean, meaning that if the key is valid or if the key is invalid and we also concluded that keys will still be valid even if they are expired uh, that is uh, that if a key is valid it's either because it's not blocked or it's because um, it's in the database so the condition then for a key to be valid it's in it's not blocked and it's in the database if one of these is not true the key is going to be invalid and you're going to get a false response but uh, we came to this problem of receiving additional information and that's what I'm going to talk about today I'm going to talk about how you can use SKGL API to get additional information about a specific license or a, a serial key and uh, I've already I've opened the code that we worked with last time and uh, of course you can get the same code from uh, uh, the tutorial that I have below this video but it's not going to be configured so you have to configure it and the actual configuration is what we talked about last this short video uh, in the beginning this tutorial so but now I would like to l focus on SKGL API so it, th that's also provided here below the video so what you, you do th then press on the link and then go to download here the download tab and you will be able to get a zip file which I've already downloaded four times I guess so double click here uh, extract the files somewhere where it's yes in a default location uh, cop oh uh, excuse me copy the code here or the folder and uh, go to the project here right click add a r new reference uh, and we press browse paste the link select the library and press ok now it's done. Now the, the remaining part is of this video is the way we can use this SQL API to get some additional information. And uh, the key that is to be validated, as we concluded in the last video, is stored in the variable key to validate. And that is required for the SID and it's now now it's also required for the SKGL API as well so we have to pass the key to SKGL API to get some additional information so if we type as we would do in SKGL API SKGL validate we create a new um, object SKGL validate we can call it val, val maybe it's equal to new SKGL dot validate then we need to get so val dot key or actually a secret fa phase first so that's the password we need to get that and we also need to get the key that we are to validate that's a bit simpler because the key we want to validate we've stored in the variable key to validate so I'm just going to reference that variable but the secret phase is given we have to look at the project that we worked with so I'm going to I've already logged into my profile here and uh, since I think yeah we used the if I remember this right, we used test one two three project last time, and the password for, of that project is hello. So we copy the password, 
and insert it into the secret face here. Now we can of course we can of course ask ourselves again if val dot is valid. I mean it's a good it's a good procedure to I mean to check this occasionally, but as the key is valid, if a key is valid and it's not in the database, it, it is going to be a valid serial key. So you, this might be optional, but I would still recommend you to check that. I don't. It, it's not going to hurt the performance that much. Uh, so now we've checked that it's valid. We've checked that it exists in the database. It's not blocked. So the last part here is to uh, basically get. The, the amount of days the key is going to be valid, so how many days there are remaining. So we type console dot write line and we type uh, we type val and then as you can see there are plenty of variables we can use here. One of their variables is um, uh, is expired. It's going to be false by default or it's going to be false if uh, uh, if the key is still valid and hasn't expired. And then the way we also can check is how many days there are left, which is located in days left. So you can see there's a difference. If you have days left, I can probably show you. Uh, I can probably, and then we can look at the set time. Uh, I mean, it's, these are almost the same, but this one set time and um, and the other variable is I think this is correct. Now let's see if this is correct. Oh, well, we can try if it's correct. Uh, so what we do then here, we copy. In, we, I mean, let's let's take another key that we know is going to be valid, and it's important to to, the, to copy the key correctly. Put in the code here. And uh, make sure to clean the solution. So, as we suspected, the first uh, field is going to be false since the key is still valid. The set time is going to be 28 and uh, uh, no 30 and the days left is going to be 28. So the set time gives you the date that was originally set on the key. So for instance, if you want to distinguish between different kinds of licenses, uh, uh, monthly, uh, yearly, uh, uh, if it's a subscription and so on. And we also get this that it's keys valid. If we go back to the database, we can see that we can actually see when it's going to expire. But as I said, there are practical reasons why keys are going to be valid even if it has expired, and that is because we can set some features. So if I just create a new key, uh, a new key, and I'm just going to okay, so a new key, and uh, let's keep 30 days as an option, and I put the feature one to be true. You can say f1 true. And I want one of these keys. So here we have a new key, which as you can see, in that new key, feature one is true. That's great. And uh, but I'm going to keep the key here. The the key that is going to be validated at this stage is still the one where feature one is zero or false. So let's let's try to close this application and uh, recompile but ask us another question right line and then we ask feature one and we we look at features zero so that's that's um, we're searching for so in this key it's going to be false I hope yes f1 is false 
but if we change this key and if I've copied it correctly now this F1 is going to be true so that's it and uh, if you want to get more uh, information about the, the, the different things that you can get from a key you can look at the SKGL project uh, as I said the website is provided below this video and uh, but the basic features that you would most likely use is to check whether a specific feature is true so you can have one feature be set uh, that one feature tells if it's a premium version if it's a light version and so on I mean there, there are different things you can do here and um, of course if it's a premium ver version we don't want to check whether the key has expired or not uh, but if it's not if it's a, a trial version in that case we want to check whether the key is is expired or or not uh, so that's it I think I'm pretty sure that we've gone through the basics so I want to just summarize what we've talked about we've talked about uh, how it's possible to use serial key manager to validate a, a license a serial key using uh, an external uh, server and um, the advantage of uh, using this technique is that the validation occurs on the server if you want to read more about licensing systems different kinds of licensing systems you can read my article about them I've provided below this video uh, but once you've read the article I could now basing basing on that we I could um, tell that if the one of the weaknesses of a licensing system is if the validation algorithm is stored in the application and another weakness is if the password is stored in the application and as you can see of course we are storing the password here in the application but I want to remind you that if the key is not in the database or if it's blocked this technique will not uh, will will allow you to spot those and uh, well, even so basically even if a key is valid it's generated using the right key but it's not in the database then it's not going to be valid ba based on the, and that's one of the advantages of using uh, uh, a server where you can control basically all the keys uh, whether one should be blocked or not and uh, and whether you can uh, remove a key or and so on so it, it, it is it gives you the power of controlling all the applications and control your application once you've published your application online uh, because it's not an offline based validation system it allows you it's always connected to a specific server in that case serial key manager and uh, once we know if a key is valid we what we later did was to look through whether uh, the the key is uh, has expired using SKGL API and we also said that SKGL API, SKGL API allows you to gain some more information about the key which the, this basic procedure doesn't so I think that was it I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this video next video I'm going to talk about how you can check whether the user has changed the time on their machine but thank you very much for watching this tutorial I hope you uh, learned and uh, are now able to implement that into your application but of course if you have any questions please um, uh, contact using the contact form on support.serialkeymanager.com or simply um, comment this video thank you very much have a great day